Sin City, the entertainment capital of the world, Lost Wages. It has many different names, but there is only one Las Vegas. High suicide rate in rats is now how you bring people to Las Vegas. It's a city that's famous for its gambling. I'm gonna go all in on this last one. It's legal prostitution. I have held hands in a guy's butt here with one of my friends. And it's celebrities. Bruno Mars or no? Yo, what's up, man? Las Vegas may look pretty, but there's a dark side that can rear its ugly little head. It's a place that's full of vices. That got me really high, I know. holy shit. And if you're not careful, it could really get you bent out of shape. Some don't even make it out alive. The guy was living here, he shot himself. So that's why he's haunted. So I'm here to experience all that this city has to offer. I'm gonna go to the shaft. Sorry if it's a little dry from Vegas, I don't know. This is the Vice Guide to Vegas. Las Vegas is a city where you can win big. So with my limited production budget, I wanted to kick off my journey by gambling what we had in the hopes of increasing it to have the ultimate Vegas experience. So here is my plan. I had organized a coaching session with career gambler and prolific card counter Richard Munchkin before taking him to the casino to give me the best chance of winning big. But since card counting is bad news in Vegas, it's important we obscured his identity so we could get his expert advice on how to count cards. Sounds like a really bad idea. Richard didn't waste any time getting into just how dangerous card counting can be. The nasty places uh, do things like handcuff you and drag you in the back room and try to intimidate you, and sometimes they steal your money. I have friends who were beaten. I know two guys who were almost killed. I had one friend where they threatened to pull his eye out with the pliers. That's very informative. Those are some fun stories. Thank you. Yeah. Richard then took the afternoon to try and teach me how to count cards. There's no way in the world you're going to learn how to count cards in an afternoon. And it wasn't quite as straightforward as I had imagined. Do you know the rules of blackjack? Is it the one where you got to not hit 21 or I can't remember? Wow, this is going to be tough. Um, the main thing about card counting is that there are different values assigned to different cards. Minus three, minus one, these two cancel, eights don't count. Got it. The combination of trying to count cards and not knowing how to play blackjack resulted in me losing every hand. Alright, so I guess that's a hit. No. And I guess I will hit in this case. No. So it is a hit. No. So you lose. So you would bust, and lose, and you bust. All right, and I lost all my money. That's exactly how it works. You think you're gonna win, and you don't. Now that we had the fundamentals down, makes sense. It was time to talk about another element of card counting, disguises. You know, we've gone through skin tint and like an elastic thing that'll pull your eyes back. You know, I have kind of a double chin that I thought was kind of distinguishing, so I wore a neck brace. I mean, going through all kinds of things. Awesome. Yeah. So the best case scenario is we win big and have the best Las Vegas experience ever. But the worst case scenario is something very different. Two guys were almost killed. Maybe I should have just found a way to make this work with the budget we were given. How old are you and you don't know how to tie a tie? Richard and I got ready together outside. Him disguised as a tourist with whiplash and me disguised as a businessman. Looks like he ironed it with a waffle iron. Today, Richard and I were testing our luck at Red Rock Casino Resort. It smells amazing in here. Located on 70 acres, close to the majestic Red Rock Canyon in Summerlin, Red Rock is a place with state-of-the-art gaming and an endless array of table games. Believe me, I understand. <laughs> Working on a budget, I uh, did a lot of low-budget filmmaking. Nice. There is no turning back now. I was nervous, but I felt confident having a true master by my side. 17. Always stay with 17 or more. And the dealer was giving me tips as well. 17 is like uh, your mother-in-law. You wish to hit, but you can. I did my best to count cards and to disguise it, and it seemed to be working. See, I passed you win. 22. You win two in a row. I can't believe that. You got it. I can't believe you win that one. All right. Very suspicious. Guys, counting cars. Counting cars.
Just when I thought I had outsmarted the casino, reality hit me like a ton of bricks. Handcuff beaten, pull his eye out with the pliers. I felt like maybe I had gotten in too deep. I was super nervous, so I decided to just go all in. Thirteen and fifteen. Nine, twenty. Body's over, man. Ah. This had been a disaster, but even though I felt at a complete loss, the bright side was that the Red Rock Casino was a great place to lose my money. And I had made a new friend, and that's priceless. Well, I've lost it all. Maybe there's somewhere you could recommend I could stay? I do know a motel, but it's kind of a ways out of town. A ways out of town sure was right. The city of sin can really chew you up and spit you out. Anyways, I continued to follow Richard's directions, and just when it felt like I would die in this desert wasteland, I arrived. Hello, how's it going? How are you? Good, my name is Taji. All right. I was wondering if you guys have any rooms available here? I do. Known as America's scariest motel, the Clown Motel has a total of 31 unique rooms, each equipped with heating and cooling, various appliances, and free Wi-Fi. It was perfect for me. Have you heard about this guy? I have not. So one time, on camera, his hand moved from here to here. Wow. It's really chilly out here. Oh yeah, man. Is this the Elvis room? This is Clownvis Presley room. Clown, Clownvis. Clownvis Presley. Nice. I paint those, these paintings, this one, that one, and then all these paintings. The you clowns. made these yourself? Yes. These are cool. So were you into the, the clowns before the motel? I was collecting clowns. You were collecting clowns? Yeah. So what's so special about this room? People reported that there is something there, like spooky things happened here. Like people see orbs, and people uh, feel that somebody is walking around the bed. Nice. You made this? Yes. This is super nice. Okay, let's go to the other room. Cool. It's chilly out here. Is this room haunted as well, or? Yes. <clears throat> really? Yeah, this room has some activities. Really? Yeah. It's a cold night. Oh man, it's cold, cold. <clears throat> All right, so this is room number three. The guy was living here three years ago. He shot himself. Really? Mm-hmm. In this room? In this room. So that's why it's haunted. Wow. Do you live here full time? I live here full time. Awesome. What's your room like? My room was haunted. In my room, people, two people died. Uh, but I chose to live there because I wanted to know how they're going to treat me. All right. Well, I think that this is where I'm going to sleep. OK. Let's do it. Thank you for coming here. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. After saying goodnight to Haim, I got ready for bed. I really thought my first night in Vegas would be a lot more glamorous than this. But here I was, over 200 miles from the city, staying alone at a haunted clown motel. Well, I wasn't completely alone. I can't say it was the best night of sleep, but I made it through to the morning. As welcoming as this place was, I felt the call for something new. So I said goodbye to Haim and the clowns before heading into the desert in search of new shelter. Well, I know where I'll go, baby, when I die. I know where I'm gonna spend my afterlife when I die. I'm gonna haunt the clown motel. 
tired, lost, and with no other options, I finally stumbled across a sign that seemed promising. Sherry's Ranch, it said. I didn't know what type of ranch it was, but I figured if I hung out here for long enough, I could hopefully meet someone that could lend me a helping hand. Hi! Hello. Hi. So nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Her name was Lovecraft, and she was as beautiful as the Vegas sun is hot. I quickly put it all together that Sherry's Ranch is a legal brothel. Things that I would specialize in are going to be anything fetish related like these down here. Equipped with multiple themed rooms, a sports bar and restaurant, and a hotel, Sherry's Ranch is a place where all of your wildest fantasies can come true. I've worked at Sherry's for over six years now. I've been in the awesome. industry for over seven. And I also do porn, so. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so you certainly know the ins and outs of this place. That is true. As we continue to get acquainted with each other, Lovecraft took me on a tour of the facilities. As I too shared my story with Lovecraft, well, I walked here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> she was gracious enough to show a guy down on his luck all that Cherries had to offer. Nice, I see there's a condom right yeah, here. Someone I guess might have been having some up. fun. Yeah. Oh yeah. So this is our porn star experience room. Whoa. So it's perfect to have a gentleman lying on the bed, one girl riding his cock while the other girl's sitting on his face. The two girls can be making out and the guy can still see everything that's going on. The live feed right here. Well, welcome to wow. my room. It smells amazing in here. We're 100% legal, we're super safe. And um, with a legal sex work, it's like very secretive. So you don't really ever even know what you're getting into. Here, it's all about that conversation. You know exactly what kind of experience you're gonna get. Like someone might be like, all I've ever wanted to do is, you know, be feeling pretty and get dressed up like a girl and have someone put something in my butt, but I'm too afraid to even tell someone about it. So I really give that opportunity to be your truest sexual self. Right on. Yeah, so I'd love to show you my menu. Lovecraft then showed me all of the different experiences she offers. This is my bondage hour. This is my two girl party. So this is the hour long hand job, hour long blow job. Right on. So this wow, is, this is quite the extensive menu. Anyways, this is my pegging party. This is my virgin special. And then here is my dom party for if you would like to dominate me. I do also allow like water sports for people who are into pee and stuff. It seemed like Lovecraft could really satisfy any customer fantasy. Really stretching out that butthole until you get a gape and then peeing in the gape. Whoa, but what she told me next seemed beyond the limits of anyone's imagination. I have held hands in a guy's butt here with one of my friends. He enjoyed this, having that, that many hands up his... Him particularly yeah. was a person who was already very, very butt experienced. Wow. But I've also been someone's first ever fisting experience because I have very talented hands. So I guess if this was the anus, how would that... Um, okay. Work? Go ahead and put pressure on my hand, like, because the butthole's pretty tight. Go ahead, okay. be tight, it's okay. All right. So we're gonna go, and then I'm gonna rotate up. And then pushing, my fingers will start to go down like that. Whoa. And then, yep. Is there like a cutoff point? I've you know, gotten you, all holy the shit, way really? up to here in a guy. Before. Whoa. After this very informative lesson, Lovecraft then went through some of the rules. Rule number four, use lube, not spit. Don't spit on your hand and touch my pussy. <laughs> before getting real with me about how important this work can really be, one time I was doing a party with a gentleman. We had a great time. There was no visual signs of anything wrong. And then at the end of the orgasm, blood was coming out of his penis and there was blood in the condom. Unfortunately, when that happens to you, it is usually a strong sign of testicular cancer, which I had to then inform him to please go and get checked for testicular cancer. So we can actually really help people who maybe don't even know what's going on with their body go and get help and get fixed. So in a way, Sherry's is kind of like my temple and all of us ladies here are we're sex goddesses. We're here to heal you, help you in any ways that we can. Sometimes that is just companionship. So <laughs> what we do is actually really beautiful. It's really meaningful. Now that I was familiar with Lovecraft's menu, I was curious to see what might be a suitable fantasy for me to experience here at Sherry's. Are you familiar with BDSM at all? Um. 
Ouch, goddess. I'm always down to try Whoa. things here. Yeah. We can get you all tied up here. We could lock you in the cage, and I could have one of my friends in here. We could start playing, making out. But you're locked in the cage, and you can't play. This is a spanking horse. Whoa. Perfect for doggy-styled sex. Spanking. We've got the little camera underneath the desk. Wow. And you can see the live feed if you want to play boss. Yeah. <laughs> and then where would I be? This is like... Right here. <laughs> Just when I thought my financial situation would stop me from enjoying any of these fantasies, Lovecraft was gracious enough to offer me a complimentary service. But first, I had to pee. I'll be quick, I promise. Where are you guys from? Every experience at Cherry's begins with a visual STD exam. And with no STD outbreaks here in over 25 years, I was happy to take part in the tradition. And we're gonna go to the shaft. Sorry if it's a little dry from Vegas, I don't know. Oh, no worries. Get you oiled up soon. So the last step that we do is this is gonna be called milking the cock. And what we're doing is we're just gonna be gently making the head of the cock going, making a little kissy mouth. And we're looking for any kind of fluid to come out as long as nothing comes out or it's clear. We're all good. And so you look fabulous and you get an A plus and you can pull them on up. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now that I had a clean bill of sexual health, Lovecraft went through some of the last details with me. So for you, I would definitely suggest uh, probably going with one of my magnums because we are thicker. And just like that, I was cleared for takeoff. One scenario I was curious to explore was this. I was a top college football player. Lovecraft was a cheerleader on the rival team, and she had snuck into my locker room to have her way with me. Saw you on the field today. You look so good. <laughs> How's it going? All those muscles. No wonder why you dominate on the field. I love the way you can handle that ball. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I appreciate it. Thanks. Do you want to come play another game? <laughs> I'll show you Thank my you. skills with the Thank ball. You. This was kind of cool. I did win the game. So. But it didn't totally do it for me. So we tried a different scenario. Do you know how to assume the position, Taji? What are we going to do? Um, our homework? Are we gonna do our homework? I'll consider doing some homework. This was another nice experience, but I started to realize that maybe my biggest fantasy wasn't something sexual at all, but rather it was having a friend. In my short time here at Sherry's, Lovecraft had made this entire experience a fantasy with how loving and sweet she had been to me. So I figured I would do my best to repay Sherry's by filling in the rest of my time here doing chores for them. So I asked Dina, the Madame of Sherry's, what needed to be done around here. So what can you do? Would you drink that? No, I would not. After being generously welcomed in, it was now time for me to leave Sherry's and return to Las Vegas. But this time, I would do it differently. On the next Vice Guide to Vegas... I mean, I say I'd leave it, you know what I mean? So I actually have a blind date coming up. Invade the space a little bit. If you feel like invade the space, I've enlisted the services of a mind reader. My date's gonna be taking place right here, and I just really want to know what she's thinking. Cheers. To find the G-spot, you wanna go up into the vagina like this, and right on the pelvic bone right there, you're going to feel a very spongy, roundish type bulb and 
that's where the G spot is. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching. Click above to see more of our Vegas coverage.